For question number one, we've got a pair of designer sneakers was purchased for $120. Since they were purchased, um, their price has increased 15%. What is the new price? All right, so for this one, um, we're just going to do the percent. You know, this one says it's a percent of increase. It's a percent of increase, so you're going to add that to 100%. So we're going to find 150, 115% right, of, or in other words, times 120. So make sure you guys change that to a decimal. So 1.15 times 120, and you'll get <clears throat> what? 138. And that's the price after the discount. For number two, Elena's aunt bought her $150 savings bond when she was born. When Elena is 20 years old, the bond will have earned 105% in interest. So how much will the bond be worth when Elena is 20 years old? So again, this is an increase. You know, we're talking about interest. So this is an increase in percent. So you're going to do 105 plus 100, which is 205%. So we're going to find 205% times 150, which should be like a million dollars, right? No, it's not going to be that. But we're going to do, I want to make sure we change this to a decimal. Move the decimal over two places to the left. And then uh, multiply that by 150. And I get $307.50. All right, number three. In a video game, Claire scored 50% more points than Tyler. If C is the number of points that Claire scored and T is the number of points that Tyler scored, which equations are correct? So, um, yeah, this is again, this is looking at an increase. 50% <clears throat> more. 50% more. So 50% more would be 150%. You know, and when you translate that to decimal form, that's going to be 1.5. So we're looking for all instances. I mean, not everything is going to have a 1.5 1. 1. in it, but let's, let's see here. This one shows that. All right, and then um, B is almost there. I mean, if this was, if that had a T on it, we can go somewhere with it, but that is not going to be viable uh, for, for C. That one works because when you add, when you went, add one T plus one half T, you get 1.5 T, right, which is equivalent to A. So C works. All right, D is kind of just like a B, so we can count that one out. And then E is, that one works too, because 1 plus 1 half is 1.5 times T. So for that one, it was A, C, and E. All right, for number four, draw a diagram to represent each situation. All right, so for A, the number of miles driven this month was a 30% decrease of the number of miles driven last month. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to just draw a diagram like this. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do, well, I mean, I could do that. I was going to do number double number line, but this is no different, really. So I'm going to break this up into 10 parts. All right, it's not perfect. All right, now those are exactly the same. And then a 30% decrease. All 
All right, so my top percent strip right there, that's going to be last month, and the bottom one is going to be this month. And we're looking at a 30% decrease. And so this is number of miles. So that's 100%. Those are all the miles that they drove. And then this month, it was a 20% decrease. If there's any number of ways you can kind of draw this. This is just the way I did it. All right, and then I'm going to put some numbers here. I'm going to put that that's 20% right there. You know, so you essentially did 20% uh, less driving, right? That's basically what it says. All right, for B, the, the amount of paper that the copy shop used this month was a 25% increase in the amount of paper they used last month. Okay, so we're going to kind of do a similar thing here. I don't think I have to necessarily make it as big. All right, though so this was last month. All right, and I'm going to break that up into force because it's talking about 25%. Okay, so that's the amount of paper they used. And I just did a copy and paste there of the of the new one. That's this month. And so what are we going to do here? I'm going to just... I don't think you necessarily have to make a dash, dot, but or dash, but I'm going to do that. So right there, that represents 25% increase. All right. So which decimal is the best estimate of the fraction 29 40s? Now the um, you know twenty nine fortieths the way I see it is that it's really close to thirty fortieths. It's pretty close to thirty over forty, and thirty over forty when you change it into a decimal is seventy five hundredth. Okay, so and that that must tell us that C is probably the closest to it. Now, B is not that far, but C is the closest, you know. So is D, I guess. I mean, D is not that, I guess we round up. Um, but, uh, you know, if I really, you know, if I actually figure that out, what's that, 29 divided by 40? Yeah, that's 0.725, it's not B. All right, for number six, could 7.2 inches and 28 inches be the diameter and circumference of the same circle? Explain why or why not. And, well, <coughs> circumference equals pi times diameter. And I'm assuming that um, 7.2 is the diameter. And so if we were to do 7.2 times 3.14, you know, just basic estimate there for pi. Um, I don't think we're going to get 28. I get 22.608 inches, which is not true. <clears throat> right? So, I mean, that's not that far from 28 at all, but not, you know, relatively speaking, it's not that close. And if I do 28 divided by pi, I get like 8.9. So, you know, we'd probably want a number here that was closer to 8.9. Because um, that would give us a circumference that's pretty close to 28, or at least not very far. Okay, that does it for 
less than eight practice problems.